Welcome, Commissioner Simpson. We're very happy having you here at the Solar Power Euro op office today, just across the street from your own offices. We have very good news to share with you because the solar sector deployed 41 gigawatt of solar this year, 41 gigawatt of installations. That means 12 million new homes are powered by solar this year. And that also means that we are by, by, by far um, outperforming basically our own forecasts still a year ago. Uh, that is beyond our high scenario, what uh, the solar sector deployed. I could imagine that uh, this is very good news to you because it's also uh, very much delivering on the Repower EU package, uh, making sure that Europe becomes independent from Russian fossils, from fossils more generally, making sure that we are getting down the prices for European citizens, that we are stabilizing our economies and that we are, after all, still tackling climate change. Thanks for having your reaction to the result we are delivering. Indeed, this is impressive and now power is very high. So I hope that next year we will have even uh, more impressive numbers uh, to announce. And, and good morning to everybody. Um, this year has taught us uh, of the grave importance of a secure homegrown energy system, one that cannot be manipulated for geopolitical purposes, and that system is to be based on renewables. Solar has a very important role to play, as it can be deployed fast and make a real difference already in the current crisis, and therefore the Commission is doing all it can to support the deployment of solar energy, with renewables at the core of our Repower EU plan. We increased the proposed renewable energy target for 2030 to 45%. And going to 45 will be no small effort. It means more than doubling of the renewables share in the next eight years and tripling of the deployment speed that we have seen over the last decade. With the solar strategy that we adopted uh, this year, we are aiming to bring online over 320 gigawatts of solar photovoltaic by 2025 and almost 600 gigawatts by 2030. And these are all very ambitious plans. But um, with the strategy, we have set a clear policy line on how to get there. Part of it uh, is making rooftop solar panels mandatory. To remove possible barriers to achieve our goal, the Commission has brought forward actions to speed up and simplify permitting procedures that are currently slowing down the industry. And we proposed an emergency regulation on faster permitting for renewable projects, including provisions of solar deployment in particular. Barriers also come in the form of our market design. And right now we are operating with a design that reflects our energy world of yesterday, not our renewables-based future. And early next year, we will propose a reform of the electricity market with demand for solar energy growing, we should be ready to seize on the opportunity on the supply side. And so we just launched the EU Solar PV Industry Alliance, our proposal to seize the tremendous industrial opportunity on offer. The alliance uh, will help us to expand manufacturing capacities for more innovative, more efficient, and more sustainable solar PVs. And I would also like to take uh, the opportunity to thank Solar Power Europe uh, for your leadership. You have always given us a uh, very valuable perspective, uh, perspective of the industry and, uh, and your voice is heard at the Commission, heard loud and clear. And uh, we very much appreciate your support this, um, in ensuring that uh, the legislation that um, we are making today can help us um, to achieve our unprecedented um, solar energy targets across the EU. So year 2022 has been really good for the solar deployment. This is not the reason to slow down now. And uh, let this year results give us inspiration to work uh, harder, to lay the right foundation for the EU solar market of the future. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And indeed, we should be inspired by the installation records we've seen this year. 
uh, taking us to, to the ambitions that you just mentioned, uh, 600 uh, gigawatt installed by 2030 AC, that's 750 gigawatt uh, DC indeed. Um, for next year, Ursula von der Leyen and, uh, and Fatih Birol, the executive director of the International Energy Agency, have just recently uh, published or uh, presented a report how to make sure that where there's no gas shortages uh, for the next winter. And what that report tells us is that we need to install around 60 gigawatt of solar next year, uh, together with 25 gigawatt of wind. Um, so these 60 gigawatts, they're in the range of our forecast of the European market outlook for, for next year. Um, and by the way, you know, we do think that in the next couple of years, uh, also 100%, uh, 100 gigawatt of solar can be possible. But I do think we should not take it for granted. Uh, to get there. And I know that you're not taking it for granted, you just, uh, you just mentioned it, and the solar strategy is pushing very much uh, to have more solar and, and overcome the bottlenecks. We mentioned five, a handful uh, of, of main action points we see for the next couple of months um, in order to make these amounts that we need uh, possible. So the first one is skills. We need to have workers to bring solar on the ground, on the roofs and all infrastructures. So we, we need to make sure not running into bottlenecks here. The second one is spatial planning, improving spatial planning. The commission is already doing a lot on permitting, but there's still improvements which need to be made. The third one is uh, more smoothly integrating renewables and solar, in particular into grid. So we're talking about grid investments, but also storage uh, and flexibilities more generally. Regulatory environment, uh, providing stability for investors. Market design uh, is very important. And the fifth one, and not the least one, is supply chains. We need to make sure that we have the products to roll out solar uh, massively. Uh, and that means diversifying supply chains, but also, and very importantly, making sure we have a sizable industry. You mentioned the PV Industry Alliance. We're very happy to have it, have a sizable industry here uh, in Europe. So I hope you agree with these five points. Uh, I would be curious to know what kind of actions the Commission will undertake next year on these five priorities. Uh, I agree, and, uh, and um, as you mentioned, solar will play a, a key role on our journey to replace uh, Russian fossil fuels, uh, especially natural gas. And already this spring, when we published our Repower EU plan, um, then uh, solar strategy was very important part of that strategy. And uh, since then, uh, we have uh, from our side also followed up. So um, there have been several meetings on um, skills partnership. And, uh, and uh, we do uh, know that uh, renewable industry in the wider sense, but also solar, uh, will offer um, lots of new jobs, but for that, you need a skilled workforce, and, uh, and this is also for us a priority to support you in this regard. And in our solar strategy, you also proposed uh, that uh, we will have large-scale skills partnership for renewable energy and other pacts for skills. So as you know, you have been active in this, uh, this work uh, where um, we have had also meetings with uh, different stakeholders, and Solar Power EU is very much there involved, so thank you for that. Now, uh, what comes to the um, permitting, then, uh, this is a, a continuous uh, effort to shorten this bottleneck. Um, there will be several provisions um, in Renewable Energy Directive, mm -hmm. but uh, due to the fact that Member States need some time to transpose these amendments when they are agreed with stakeholders, um, we also um, used this extraordinary Article 122 uh, to preach this time frame. And I hope that this helps um, in the year of 2023, and especially there are provisions for solar mm. uh, installations. So Very grateful for that, by the way. <laughs> uh, and uh, we are meeting with energy ministers very often, but, uh, but this permitting part was really um, important for, mm. for several, uh, several member states. And I hope that we can see results also on the ground next year. Now, what comes to the, the clear signals for uh, investors, electricity market design for sure uh, is one of the next year's uh, most expected uh, legislative proposals. 
uh, commission will start um, in these days, uh, the stakeholder consultation. And um, the aim of ours is to renew the design in the way that uh, it helps renewables to cover the higher share mm. of our electricity consumption, but at the same time um, allows um, consumers to benefit from the situation where renewables will be deployed at these high level scales as we expect. I'm very happy to contribute to that uh, indeed, so our, our position is almost ready. <laughs> very good and of course we know that we have to be um, also ready to, to connect more renewable installations into the grid that means additional investments we know that uh, several member states have uh, announced their plans how they will use um, the recovery funds in this regard these plans are also um, using lots of financing exactly for these purposes to strengthen the grids and and uh, from our side, um, this is a complex challenge and part of the answer is already available in the current legislation and is being, uh, for instance, instance developed um, through network codes and, and demand response. The last one from where the solar panels will come from uh, and I really hope that our solar alliance uh, will help us to diversify our uh, supply ch change and, uh, and bring some of the production back to Europe. Mm. Thanks very much. Uh, indeed, you mentioned grids. Uh, that is one of the uh, areas where we do think that uh, more needs to be done because 70% uh, of solar you know, is uh, connected to the, to the DSO uh, grids, for example. So DSO should be very much in the focus, uh, but also storage. And, uh, and what we do think needs to be done as a next step is you know, in parallel to deployment of, of solar and, and, uh, and other renewables um, have a strategy on solar. So, and, and that's also what we understand citizens want us to do. We just recently published a report on residential storage where it was clear that you know, citizens want to be uh, active energy consumers, prosumers, uh, and that they want to have storage. So we are very much pleading for having a dedicated storage strategy in order to massively deploy storage, helping the grids. Uh, so can we expect something from the Commission on, uh, on this in next year? With um, increased shares of renewables, indeed flexibility and, uh, and um, storage uh, will become more important and they are an integral part of our energy system and we know that, uh, that there are expectations from the sector. So um, the Commission is looking into the role of flexibility in the context of electricity market design. And, and in addition, the Commission is also working on staff work, working document on storage, uh, which will provide a um, comprehensive overview of the role of energy storage in the energy transition. Um, but it also assesses a current uh, regulatory and financial framework for energy storage. And the staff working document will also address uh, the existing barriers, but uh, offers also um, some opportunities. So, so I hope that this is the first step um, to strengthen the storage side that will be necessary um, to achieve our extremely high targets for, for this uh, next year's and, and uh, also by 2030. This is great news. Thanks very much. We will be very happy to contribute also to, to the work you're doing on storage. Uh, more generally, thanks very much for your support, uh, the, your support to the solar sector, to renewables more generally. Um, and we're very much looking forward to further cooperate in a very fruitful way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over.